Hey everyone, John Dickinson from MotionWorks.net back with a Cinema 4D ZBrush tutorial for you. I've only just recently started using ZBrush, so I'm actually really just a beginner, but I needed to research and work out a workflow for how to add the knurling to the grip of this Beretta pistol. And this is the left hand side and it's come out pretty well. Quite happy with it. It's fairly high poly. And I had the option of either doing that in ZBrush or I'm going to also try it in Substance Painter as well using the new displacement features and see which one looks best. But I wanted to work out how to do this in ZBrush and put it in here and just see how it looked. And I'm pretty happy with the result. So what I do is thought I'd record a quick tutorial and show you the process that I used on the right hand grip. Now, as I mentioned, I'm a beginner, um, not an absolute beginner, but somewhat of a beginner. So if you can see a better workflow or a better way of doing something, please leave a comment and we can all learn from that. So here in Cinema 4D, I have this grip right detail. I'm just gonna copy that, create a new document and paste, just leaving it in the position that it's pasted. And I wanna export that. So file, export as an OBJ. And I'm gonna name this, uh, let's see, Grip detail right. I think it's 03 was the next one I was going to do. I've already done a version, but I wanted to do a new version. Okay, so I don't want materials and everything else I'm going to leave as it is. Let's click OK. Okay, so here in ZBrush, I'm going to import my OBJ. Actually, I might just make a new document. And just import the OBJ. So that was grip detail right 03. And I'm going to click and drag to add that to my scene. And click edit. Okay. So this is fairly low poly. I'm going to have to subdivide this a little bit. And I'm still getting used to the order of which to do things. First thing I want to do is I want to rotate this object so that the knurling is at the correct rotation. And this is the only way I've worked out how to do this so far. There might be another way to do this. So I'm going to go to Surface and click Noise. And I'm actually going to open a, a template that I created. So this is just this um, seamless diamond shape and you can see how that looks when that's applied. So I'm going to click OK and actually want to change the um, angle of the diamonds. So the only way I've worked out how to do this is actually rotate the object before I apply to mesh. So I need to click on rotate and just work out how far I need to rotate it, which is this direction. About, about there, maybe a little bit more. If you look at the top left uh, of the grip, you can see I'm just trying to line that up. So it's 9.1371. I'm just gonna write that down. So I'm just gonna delete that for now. Next thing I want to do is hide the polygons that I don't want to be affected. So I'm going to do that using polygroups. Change the size of my brush, just press the S key. And I need the Z modeler brush. The Z modeler. <laughs> I'm still getting used to saying. ZBrush. I know everyone says ZBrush, but obviously um, in Australia here we say Z, but I don't see many, I don't hear many people saying ZBrush. So now I want to hit the spacebar. Uh, I need to be over a polygon. Spacebar, polygroup, and I also want it to be uh, for the target, polyloop. So if I click on that now, that's going to put that into a new polygroup. And this one here as well. 
I don't want the knurling to go all the way up to the edge because it makes it look really rough. Oops, I could always add another loop in here. By hitting space and I've got insert single edge loop. I could always just click and add a loop there. Just like that. Is that too much? Maybe that. Okay, now click and that'll add that. Come down to the bottom. Okay, now I can control shift click and click again and that hides those. Okay, so now I've just isolated the poly group that I want to add the knurling to. Just like that. And I probably have to actually subdivide this a little bit. Also getting used to the order in which I have to subdivide things. One point five million is fine. That's what I used for the left hand side. I just need to go and hide these again. Okay. All right, so now I can add the knurling. But first of all, I need to mask out where the Beretta logo is going to be. I got a pretty good idea about the size that I want that. So I'm going to use uh, Mask Perfect Circle. And I'm going to, and I'm holding down the control key here drag rectangle. I'm just going to choose my alpha. So I'll set focal shift to minus 100. That'll give me a sharp edge. And just click and drag with the control key held down. The approximate size that I want. That's about right. Now I can hold down the alt and the control key and click inside the mask just to sharpen that up. Just like that. Okay, so now I have that area masked off, I can come back to surface and click on noise and open. Grab the one I created earlier. Click OK. OK, looking good. And now I can apply that to the mesh. Okay, so now I have the displacement. Okay, so next what I want to do is invert that mask. I'm sure there's a keyboard shortcut for that. And I want to come back and just grab my standard brush and drag rectangle and just choose my Breda logo. Now to get this centered, just going to change the size of my brush. It'd be a really nice feature in ZBrush if you could hold the spacebar down and reposition the brush as you're drawing it. But as, as of yet, I can't see that um, the capability in there. So I've had to just keep trying it until I got it in the right position. So if I just change my intensity. I know I need to use 16. That's what I use for the left side, I'm going to change my focal shift to minus 100 so I don't get soft edges. And just line that up as best I can. Click and drag and just drag it into place. That's not too bad. I've got pretty even amount of space around the outside. Just want to line that up like that. Okay, looking good. So now I can come into masking and just clear the mask. There's a lot of um, fine detail. I just need to polish that a little bit. So if I come to deformation and just set polish to one, I'll just soften that a little bit. That looks better. Okay, so now I can unhide everything. Let's control shift click. You can see I haven't affected everything that was hidden. 
or anything that was hidden. Looking good. So now what I can do is rotate this back into position. Now the rotation was 9.1371. So I should be able to get that fairly close. Okay, so not exact, but pretty close. There's got to be a better way to do that. So anyone can enlighten me, uh, that'd be great. How to get my uh, surface noise at the correct angle without actually having to rotate the object. Maybe there's not, maybe that's the only way. But Okay, so now that I have that, I can export it. So I'll call this O3A. Come back to cinema and import that. So I'm going to choose File, Merge Objects, and choose this one here. I'm going to combine and have no material. Click OK. There we go. So I can turn off the other one. Just like that. And it's a pretty good result. You can see it was just a tiny bit uh, different in the rotation value but you can, can't even tell it's just like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 I do have to just extend uh, just come to I do have to extend this slightly because this this was split off of this object I just need to extend that a little bit but you can see it's very high poly but that's the um, that's the only downside of getting this great detail in here. You can see it's still pretty responsive. And if I just quickly render that, it looks great. So that's how I used ZBrush to add the knurling and logo displacement to my grip. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to give that a go in uh, Substance Painter with the new displacement settings. But for now, once again, if you can think of uh, or you do know of better ways to do this just um, leave a comment this is john dickinson from motionworks.net have fun be creative and i'll see you in another tutorial